cold outside there. Yeah. I thought it was getting warmer. Okay, could you, Garnet, please tell people to come in for announcement? Please. So how was your week? Blessed, wonderful. I'm blessed too. At least I was warmer inside. I haven't been out for a long time now, but I'm keeping warm and doing my exercise, walking exercise and the bicycle, everything indoors. So keep on with that by God's grace. Okay, um, tomorrow, what are we having tomorrow for the church and the officers? Training. When does it start? 9.30 to 1 o'clock, please. Every one of us, can we gather here both young and old so that we can finish? And then after that, what did we say we were going to do? We just do prayer walk around for just an hour hmm? to prepare these people because God has already given them into our hands. We need to pray as we start our work. I'm glad you are here. You're always out when I'm doing an answer. Come on. I, I just started. Yes, there. Yeah. Yes. So just one hour prayer walk, and some people will help the uh, food bank people, and few of us will go around and just pray for the community before we start the whole thing. Yes, indeed. Good morning, Sister Jennifer. It's lovely to see you, George. Wonderful. Happy Sabbath to you. And. Uh, it's nice to have Ryan DeGuel here with us, and uh, wonderful. Um, where is Joel today? I haven't seen Joel. Is she here? Oh, praise the Lord, we talk soon, okay, dear? Okay, and uh, it's our brother. Is, eh? Oh, sis Sister Brown, it's lovely to see our Sister Brown. Praise the Lord, looking beautiful. I mean, she just looked like 16 year old God. Praise the Lord. You see, when you serve the Lord with all your heart and with all your might and everything, the Lord sustains you. Oh, it's a bad day. Brilliant. Sister Brown, we'll be praying for you for your bad day um, today. You know, it's lovely to have you here with us. Um, elder on duty. It's outside there on the, um, on the notice board because I finished my, I mean, I haven't finished my work, but at least to coordinate the platform party today. But uh, you will see next month, it will be Anthony Kendall, okay? So if you are not sure, it is all there. And if you want to know the elder working with you in your department, it's all there, and uh, you can just look at it and copy it so that when you have a meeting, you invite them. Because for me, I go to every meeting. You don't need to invite me. Somebody just tell me we're having a meeting. I will present myself there. Isn't that nice? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, after the training, I've told you all that, and let us come together, really work for the Lord. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited. After these 10 days of prayer, my life has changed completely. I'm sure yours have changed as well. Yes. Um, and invite the youth, too, to come with us. Okay? And... Um, Oh, yes. Okay, so that's that one. Let me see what I have again. I had in one class, Chioma was telling them about our members, all the members that are not able to come to church. Please, it would be lovely to give them a ring. Uh, if that all the members in your class, you know. But uh, Sister um, Gloria Williams, if you have time, please call. But like I told the class this morning, I call her every Monday and have a chat. Not just three minutes, long chat. So make sure you have time and call her and have a chat with her. She's missing us so much, you know, but, uh, you know, if we keep in touch, um, she will not be missing us so much. She'll be with us. She watches church every time, okay? Um, and the, all the heads of the department, if you have any announcement, please 
please, please, let the elder on duty have it by Wednesday so that that can be sent to SEPO to before, because SEPO does everything within the week. He doesn't come here and, and uh, print uh, bulletins or whatever. So let us have it by Wednesday and the duty elder will be there for you to communicate with, please. Mm. And uh, so coming soon will be, we will have one force elder on duty, we will have one nurse on duty, and we will have one fire what, Pam, do you call it fire marshal? on duty every Sabbath. But this will be coordinated between Steve Piddington, who is the health and safety and joy, you know, so that we make sure all these things are ready, given to Deacon and Deaconesses are there, so that if anything happens, they know who to call immediately. Please cooperate with us. We are here as our brothers and sisters keep us, you know. You don't know who will be your patient because the next one in front of you may be your patient. It is important to look after ourselves, okay? Um, yes, I'm just going to uh, mention that um, there will be a little bit of um, arrangement, you know, but the elders and pastor will meet and we arrange something because the way things are happening now and we return to altar in reverence to God so that at least we don't come from east and west, you know, coming from here to the platform party, running from here and whatever here. If we can reverently just go through the vestry and come through here and do whatever we are going to do and reverently go back and we do not call people after the announcement the people that are on platform, we don't go around chasing them. You just take yourself to the vestry where we pray and we start the program for the day. Thank you so much for your cooperation. May the Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Uh, can we please stand for the intro, please? There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit 
There are sweet expressions on his face, and I know that he is the presence of the Lord. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Our call to worship is Psalms 139, uh, verses 23 to 24. Search me, O God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. I say a prayer. O oh, kind and heavenly Father, we come to you today. Today, Lord, you have opened our eyes, give us breath of life, that we may see and know you. Father, I ask each of, for everyone here today, may you bless them. Open your arms and cuddle them, dear Lord. For wherever they may be going through or may, whatever they may seem to think that they're going through. Lord, I ask you to open their heart, their minds, and their toes. That to believe you are God of all God. Kings of kings, Lord of lords. May we accept you for who you made us to be. And let us in, leave, get you into our lives that we may show others. And know life is forever lasting with you. Father, bless us. Give us strength that we may be able to go through today knowing you and serving you of all heart and mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The song, opening song is 159, The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. 
Happy Sabbath. happy Sabbath. When we say Happy Sabbath, it's really something that we should say with gusto. Because when the Sabbath comes, when it's nearing to the Sabbath for me, oh, I feel so relaxed. I feel so at peace. I long for that day, even if whatever, I feel so at ease. And I hope it's the same for you. It's my duty to say welcome to each and every person with us today. We may have some visitors with us. If you would just wave for us to say that you're a first-time visitor with us. We don't have any first-time visitors. Second-time visitors. Well, all right. Well, if we don't have any first-time visitors, no second-time visitors, you're all members of West Croydon Seventh Adventist Church. So our... Visitor, our friends and family online, we just want to welcome you just today. We want to welcome our members, our regular members. We thank you for being here with us on this blessed Sabbath day. Now, when we say welcome, it's more than saying welcome, we are glad that you're here. It says welcome to the house of God. It says that you are thankful to be here in the house of God. It says that you have triumphed over the evil one and everything else that kept you from coming here. You could have been anywhere else. You could have been on holiday. You could have been in some nice jacuzzi or in the sunshine. You could have even been ill. But we are glad that you have made it to the house of God whereby you are going to worship at us today. The Spirit of God has kept you. He has controlled every will that you have because you have given him that will to control because he's not going to push. He's going to control when you give him that will so that you'll be able to keep whatever you ask him for that you can come to church today with us. We pray that you keep close to God and when on that sea of glass, when on that sea of glass, I pray that each and every one of us here and those, our, our friends online, whatever platform they're listening from, will be able to say and to hear God, Jesus Christ saying, welcome home. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Amen. This is our praise and worship time, so we're going to ask you to put your voices together while we sing. We don't have any musicians, so please, we need everyone to sing. Amen. Our first song will be 499, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to Oh! 
God in prayer, we're going to sing 309, All to Jesus I Surrender. All to Jesus I Surrender Oh, 
you surrendering all. The chorus one more time, please. I surrender. Jesus paid it all. Sweet, sweet, sorry, pass me not to a gentle savor. Hello, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. 
All right, so that's all sing first as I listen now behind me. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. for the pastoral prayer, but first of all, you may sit. Uh, I want to remember Sister Brown. It is her anniversary. Can you please stand where you are, Sister? Oh. Yeah, her birthday, yes, I said it. Is she here? Sister Brown? <coughs> well, then we're going to make all together uh, a prayer for her, wishing her a good and an awesome new year to come. Amen? Amen. Uh, I ask us all to bow our heads now for that specific moment, and then I will make the pastoral prayer. <laughs> Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, we are glad for this sister to be with us, Sister Brown. Dear God, you know the personal struggles of her life. One more year passing and another coming for her life, God. We ask you that you can please grant her, according to your mercies, a great blessing, God, of all kinds of prosperity in her life. Great wisdom, like the one of Solomon, God. Please pour upon her, God. Please pour upon her the reign of the Holy Spirit, God, in her life for purification, sanctification, God. Pour out gifts, spiritual gifts so that she will be able to minister even more than ever she did until this moment god the time is short for all of us in this world you are about to come please god, god grant to her your favor and according to your wisdom obviously dear god we ask that you can grant the desires of her heart and even in this sad world where we live that you can give her happiness a new year um, one more year in her life of happiness with her. Please also bless her family in the same way and all her entourage, everybody around her, wherever she goes, may she, may she be a testimony of your power and glory. In the name of Jesus, God, please make her happy. This is her year, her birthday. Amen. Amen. And uh, I will now make the pastoral prayer specifically for this moment. Keep bowing. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ, we are unworthy, even in our best, we are unworthy to be in your presence. You are so pure, white, shiny in power, God, and grace. Dear God, we are nothing, but with you, we can be all we need to be, God. Please, God, sanctify this place that we call church on earth, this embassy of heaven, God, we hold on to you, please, God. Without you, no worship, nothing really matters. Please sanctify our hearts so that when we are in your presence, is as in this Sabbath, one more time, 
please purify our lives, God, when we leave this place as well. May we walk out of this place not being the same people we were when we entered. Please change our lives, God. Only you know the secrets of the hearts of every man and woman in this place, God. Please burn us and burn that which is wrong. Make it disappear from out of my life, starting in my life, because I need you, God, to purify me. Please, God, I don't want to be the same anymore. I don't want to be. And I suppose nobody here wants, God, please purify our lives, God. And please empower this group church with the Holy Spirit. Baptize us all with the Holy Spirit, God. In put, put in our consciences specifically the things that we need to change. In this specific group, you know, God, you, we know that you like us to be objective when we pray. The beautiful words don't matter anything. God, please take away of our lives that which does not matter, which does not glorify your name. This group church that we are here, we want to serve you. We want to be a, a worthy embassy of you in here in Croydon, wherever it has to be. Please, God, show us in our lives. If we, if we are blind until this point, please, through your mercies, open our eyes to see what we have not seen until this place, until this moment, God, please, for us to change and to be empowered to serve, to preach the gospel. You are eager to see us as a powerful, powerful group uh, witnessing in your name, God, wherever we go, God. Please wash us with your reign, the reign of the Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, stay with us now. And may every song, may every word coming from the pulpit, even until the very door where we have the, the, the welcomers, May every one of us be inspired by you. May it be in our face, in our smile, in our eyes. In the name and by the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ, we ask, please come down, stay with us in power. Amen. Amen. Now is the time when we, the whole church can participate. It's a time for tithes and offering. So we are going to listen and then we are going to pray and then the deacon and deaconesses or deacons will come forward. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments, that the Lord thy God will set before thee, on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come to thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall be thou in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the basket and thy store. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, you have given us strength. You have given us the ability, dear Lord, that we can go out and do some work, dear God, that we'll be able to get funds, dear Lord, that we'll be able to replenish the basket so that others can hear your word. So, dear Lord, we ask that you bless whatever is given. We know, dear Lord, that some may have to give and some may not have, but their heart, dear Lord, is with you. And their heart is that you only can see, dear Lord, that they can give a penny like the might, dear Lord, so that you'll be able to bless it. So continue to guide, protect, and keep us. And whatever we have in the storehouse that will be used for your honor, your glory, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to sing the showers of blessing. 
There shall be showers of blessings. Trillions is a promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Send from the Savior above. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessings. Precious reviving again Over the hills and the valleys Sound of abundance of rain Showers of blessings Showers of blessings we need Mercy drops round us Showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy words. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. Happy Sabbath, children. It's lovely to see you all. Now, as we've been doing for the month of January, we've been encouraging all the children to come to church on time. Now, who came to church? Who was the first child in Sabbath school this morning? Was it Jordan? Okay, come forward, Jordan. We're encouraging you to keep coming to church on time. But you know what? It's even just as important as coming to church on time is studying the word of God and learning your memory verses. Now we have a young man that knows his memory verse because all the big children have been getting all the gifts, but we need to include the little ones. Now is Markel here? Oh, there you are, Markel. Let's hear your memory verse. You're going to say it really loud so everybody can hear it. Don't be shy. Come on. Ephesians 
Fluffy Sands for day two. Be kind, one another, ten, ten heart, give one another, ten, ten, and then hands around you, and feast on the heart for day two. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? It's so important that we train the little ones from when they're young. Because when you get old like me, you're going to start forgetting. To, and you've got to wear your glasses to read the word of God. But when you learn your memory verses from when you're young, when you're old, you can just quote them. I even remember my very, very first memory verse, Matthew 1, 21. And that was when Mary was told she was going to have a baby. And his name shall be called Jesus. So it's important, parents, guardians, grandparents, encourage our little ones to learn their memory verses because it's really important. And we've all been studying adults and children being kind to one another. And that's been the theme for the stories for the month of January. Now, I'm not going to read you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is a is entitled What Did Brother, jo Brother Dijon and Sister Dijon Do? Can you say that with me? What did Brother Dijon and Sister Dijon do? Now, when I do this, I, that's what I want you to say when I do this. Let's have a practice. What did brother and sister Dijon do? Now we're going to find out. Now, I received an invitation to go to another Seventh-day Adventist church, and I was really excited to go. And then I thought, well, I shouldn't really go on my own. Let me invite somebody else. So I thought and thought and thought. And I thought, well, I haven't seen Brother Dijon and Sister Dijon in church for a while, so I'm going to invite them. They were very happy to come, even though Brother Dijon was feeling a little unwell. So when I arrived, and I was praying all the way on my journey to pick them up, that we could get to church on time. Because I'm always late, and they're even later than I am. So I thought, right, we're going to church on time. So I picked them up. We were running on time. And I looked at, we were stuck in a little bit of traffic. And when I looked at the time, I thought, oh, are we going to make it? We've got to be there for 11 o'clock. We've got to be there for 11 o'clock. So I put my foot down on the accelerator, and I was speeding down the road. And then all of a sudden, I looked in the mirror, and I could see Sister John. Come on, children, say it. Right, so Sister Dijon had her eyes closed like this. And Brother Dijon had his hand at the front of the car like this. And I think that's because I was speeding. I think they were praying and asking God to make me slow down a bit. I think that's what they were doing. So, that, and I looked at the speedometer, I thought, oh, it was a little bit high, it was on 40 and I should be doing 30. So I thought, oh, let me slow down, because it's not good to speed, because if you have an accident, it's going to be terrible. So even though I was driving at the normal speed, I could still see that they were silently praying and asking God to take us to church on time. Now, when we arrived, it was very strange. I didn't see all the cars that I normally see there. But we went inside, and the church was empty. It was two minutes to 11, and we were so happy that we got to church on time. We were laughing. We were saying, I've never been the first person to come into church before and to be on time. And we were laughing and having fun that we were the first one in in church. Then, they said, where is everybody? Are you sure we're in the right place? If we're in the wrong place, we better go to West Croydon because then we could get to church on time and have divine service and still be on time. Then I made a phone call to the person that invited me 
And I said, where's everybody? Where in church? Have I come to the wrong building? Is it the wrong day? And the person said, no, it's the right day. But unfortunately, I'm late because I'm picking other people up and bringing food to church. But the others should be there soon. I'm surprised the elder's not there. I said, what should we do? But this person said, just wait. Somebody will come soon. Well... We were still la- they were still laughing in the background, saying how on time they were for church. Maybe we're in the wrong place. But I said, no, we're in the right place. But guess what? Everybody's late. I don't know why everybody's late. But Brother De John and Sister De John said, well, let's put the chairs out so that when they come, we can start church on time. So we put the chairs out, even though we didn't know what order we should put it in. It was very similar to our church with a little aisle down the center. And we put the heating on as well. We couldn't get in the cupboard to get anything else out. But we had the chairs, the heating was on, the tables were set out. And then in came the elder. (gasps) He was huffing and puffing, he was sweating. And he looked around and he said, That's amazing. The church is all set up and ready for worship. People will be coming here very, very soon. What made you set the chairs out so lovely like this? We've never had it like this before, but it is beautiful. And I think we should have it like this all the time. And so the visitors and the other members came and they had no idea that those that should have set the church up were late, but we didn't tell them. But we had a lovely service in the church. But then at the end, they noticed some bags under one of the table. There was about 12 bags of shopping, just like this. But they were full to the brim. And he's very observant, Brother Dijon, and he was staring at them for a very, very long time. Well, have a guess. What did they do when they saw 12 bags of shopping? Anybody want to say what did they do? Took the bags. Took the bags. All the 12 bags. Anybody else want to hear? Can you watch us me as my heart as his may? Amen. I think he knew exactly what he did. Anybody else want to tell us what they did with those 12 bags that they saw? Okay, you can come and tell us. correct they didn't take all of the 12 they went and spoke to the elder and said I know somebody that's in need can I have some of those shopping bags to give to somebody that really really needs some food do you think the elder allowed them to take some shopping yes because every third Sabbath of the month they would provide all these 12 bags of shopping and people in the community would come and have worship and take a bag of shopping home with them but brother Dijon he didn't take one he took two bags of shopping and do you know what on the way home he gave them to a lady that was in need of food and she was so so happy to receive Two bags of shopping, because she had very little food in her house. So she was blessed that day. So it's important, children, that when God bless us, that we help to bless others too. Amen. Yes? Now, I know Brother John is here. I can hear his voice in the background. He's not very well. 
So what we're going to do today, we're going to put some items in this bag. If you open the bag for me, and I want you children to choose something out of this bag and put it in that bag for brother and sister Dijon. You first. Oh, what did you put in the bag? Orange. Orange. What are you going to put in the bag? What's Banana. that? Bananas. What are you going to put in the bag? Do you want to have a go? Come on. What's that? Strawberries. Strawberries. Bag of nuts, coconut water, apples. Oh, well, this one says, bolt from the blue. Helps give you some oomph. So when they drink this, I think they're going to be here every single Sabbath. Okay. Green apples. We've got a pineapple. Now, pineapple's very good for you. It's full of lovely vitamins, and it's got something in it called bromelain. Now, bromelain helps you to relieve pain. When you're feeling pain, it's very good to eat pineapple because that's a very good way to relieve some pain. Do you want to put the last one in there? What have we got in there? Anybody else? Have a go. There's a bottle of something in there. Oh, a bottle of drink. Yes, they can celebrate that they've come to church this Sabbath. And we want to see them every Sabbath. It's a good celebration. And we have some items here from the body shop. So we're going to put that in the bag as well. Put that in the bag, my darling. Wonderful. Now, God is very good. Now, we're going to pray for brother and sister Dijon. Um, pray for Sister Dijon to help to continue to strengthen her husband and to help to get him better by praying for him and looking after him. And somebody else is going to pray for Brother Dijon that he will continue to get stronger and stronger every day. Lord, we want you to guide us and protect us, keep us safe, make everybody feel better when they're ill. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I want you to pray for Sister Dijon. Sister Dijon has my father, has a piece of all day too. As has my one, has my, I can buy her money. Has a mother, has a father, amen. Thank you. Amen. Please pray for Sister Dijon, yes? Help her to look after her husband very well. Help us, help us to lift her to her husband very well. Amen. Amen. Can you give this to brother and sister to John? Is this too heavy yes, for you? Too heavy. Yes, please. There's brother and sister to John right there. Thank you. Thank you. There they are. Amen. And this one is for you for saying your memory verse so well. We're very proud of you. Amen. Thank you. Could you all go back to your seats now? Thank you, husband. Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 21, and we'll be reading from 15 to 19. Has everybody got their Bible, please? Bible, book of John, chapter 21, and we'll be reading from verse 15 to verse 19. Please switch off your mobile phone. When you have it, say amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord and the truth. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me 
more than these? And he said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, and Simon, son of Jonas, thou lovest me? Peter was grieved. And you know why. Because he had unto him, he has said unto him, the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest everything. Thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, Unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus said, when thou was young, listen to this carefully, thou guardest thyself and walkest wherever you want to go. But when you are old, you stretch your hand and somebody will put clothes on you and put you where you don't want to go. And when you think about what this does to people. They go where they are not want to go because they are old. And respect is God. So and carry you wherever you don't want to go. This spake he, signifying by the death he should glorify God. And when he has spoken this, he said unto him, Peter, Follow me. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That God, we are able to be called back to God. It doesn't matter what we do. He can also restore us into the fold. Amen. So this ends the reading for today. And let me introduce our preacher. It's not known about our Pastor Smith. And uh, we all know Pastor Smith, the senior pastor of this church. And after his, before he comes on to preach, as usual, we will hear a messaging song at this time by the press team. Happy Sabbath, Church. Okay. Um, um, there are times when we are downtrodden and we're tempted to forget Christ, but it's very important for us to always remember that, you know, he keeps us going, you know, and he's still in charge. You know, and we have to still keep praising him despite of everything. I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed. I'll see them someday. But thank God I didn't lose everything. I've lost faith in people who said they cared. And in times of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. Mm, I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith, but most of all, I never lost my praise. Amen. I've 
plus some good friends along life's way and some loved ones departed I'll see them someday but thank God I didn't lose everything I've lost faith in people who said they cared and in times of my crisis they were never there but in my disappointment in my season of pain one thing never wavered one thing never changed i never lost my hope i never lost my joy i never lost my faith but most of all i never lost my praise i've lost the possessions i've let them slip away and in times of my crisis I went astray, but thank God I didn't lose everything. Now I've lost possessions that were so dear, and I've lost some battles by walking in fear. But in the midst of my struggle, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope, I never lost my hope, I never lost my joy. my faith but most of all i never lost my praise amen, amen. I've, I've never lost my hope i've never lost my joy even in my season of pain that that's that's a wonderful thought to share um the first sermon was about the rattling of the keys talking to you about the end of time and what's happening i preached that um the first sabbath then i had my very close friend and mentor and and somewhat my inspiration pastor sweeney who came and he talked about the power of grace uh, i listened to the sermon i was really blessed and then our, our young inspiring preacher last week pastor jesse talked about being born again and i'm sure all of us needs a rebirth including myself it's a constant process today how to get rid of guilt and um, uh, all of us, all of us have some sort of guilt in our lives. It's good to see so many of us here today. And um, if you are born in January, you're born in the best month of the year. Thank you, Tracy. We are, we're on the same wavelength. You know, um, if you're born any other month, it's a very fantastic month. But if you're born in January, that's a... That's a great month. I'm, I'm told your wife was born in January? My birthday today. Oh, wonderful, yeah. I see. I'll, when I see it's a happy birthday to Sister Sharon. Um, the best month, but not the best day. The best day would have to be the first. So, <laughs> today's the 26th, right? 20, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm behind. Let me go into the sermon. We're way behind time. Um, teaching them to observe what? All things that I've what? Commanded you and lo, I am with you always. 
even to the end of the age. And the end of the age means that the age never ends. Actually, that's what it means in the Greek. The end of the age means you're bridging from time into eternity. So that's, that's the stuff. So, um, uh, Father, we thank you. Amen. So, so the story, the story, the story, let's hope that um, Seppo has connected me, or is it me who needs to be connected? Am I? Has he changed? Right, okay, how to get rid of guilt. Right, okay, so, so here's a lady. She was 83 years old, true story. And um, 83, and one, one day she um, went to church, and um, at the end of the service, she, she walked up to her, to her pastor, and she was in flood of tears. And um, conversation began, and she, she told him a story. And in, in the story, she says, um, many years ago, um, I, I fell in love. She was 83. And um, she, she was happily married and happily she became pregnant. And she wanted to share the story with the love of her life, her husband. And so when he came home from work, she, she shared the story with him. And he simply says, um, get rid of it. So she thought that maybe he, he was tired. He was stressed out and he never really heard what she said. Um, so in the morning, she thought he would be rested and she told him the same thing. And he said to her, you didn't hear what I said before? Just, just get rid of it. And she did. And she said, ever since that day, she had no peace. Guilt. So for over 60 years, this 83-year-old lady was carrying around in her head guilt. Guilt is a, is a very terrible thing. I don't know about you, but I know it is. It's like a plague. It, it's, it's a plague... It's a plague, it, 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 it suffocates you, guilt. It's, it's, it's like a plague, it, 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 it controls you. It's like a plague, it's like you're obligated to it. And, and, and there are many of us who walk around with, with guilt. Many of us. We are in church, we have been baptized, but guilt. And do you know, research has shown that many people who have mental health, sometimes it has nothing to do with your biological makeup. Um, a lot of people have mental health challenges because of guilt. Many of us were on medication because of guilt. Guilt is a killer. And sometimes if guilt doesn't kill, your life is totally messed up, ruined. And many of us, we are in this abyss because of guilt. And many of us, we don't know how to get rid of this guilt. We are... We're in another world. You see, guilt comes from when we have done something wrong. The Bible calls it sin. The problem is God has a real, the problem is God has a real serious problem. You see, the problem that God has is he's so desperate to change us. He's so desperate to transform us. But sadly, some of us, we enjoy um, consciously or unconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally, some of us, we seem to enjoy 
the guilt rather than getting rid of it. I want you to think about this. We are wrapped up in guilt. We have counseling. We pray. And we talk to God, but mm, guilt travel with us. Jeremiah asks the very pertinent question. I hope you have your Bibles with me. Write these texts down because I, I, I want to spend some time teaching the church. We don't teach the church anymore. Write this text down. The text says, can the, read with me, can the change his skin or the leopard change his now, now, now that's the problem, you know. Can you change your skin? And Michael Jackson tried it. Anyway, he said he suffers from vitiligo. Um, but actually he was, um, he was bleaching his skin. You know, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's one of those surgeries that is near right impossible. You Try it your best, but you can't. You know, it's like sin for, men, for, for some of us. Um, the guilt that we have done in the past keeps traveling with us in the present. And many of us, yea, all of us, would like to lay down the guilt, but it keeps coming back. I try my best, but it's still there. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 59, verse 2, but your iniquities have what? Separated you from, from your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not... Man, you know, you keep on praying and fasting and nothing is happening. There is a separation between us and God because sin separates. Sin separates. The reason why we have problems in the church has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has nothing to do with your status or your status. It's just... In our minds, in our heads, we are controlled by sin. You didn't hear me. And it plagues us. It, it, plagues, it plagues the entire human, human race. Let me illustrate um, what might be the situation, Jordan. Just think about that um, grace has baked some nice, sumptuous potato pudding that you don't like but you love. And she says to you, don't touch. And she leaves, and she leaves, and she leaves, and the potato pudding says, Jordan, come to me. Come to me, Jordan. Have me. But mom says, don't touch. And when mom came in, th there's your hand in the pot. Mom, it has nothing to do with me. Satan pushed me into it. Have you ever felt that way? Talk to me. Have you ever felt that way? The sweetness of the sin. The pull of the sin. You find yourself... And you know it's wrong, but somehow the devil keeps pushing you. It, it, it is so sweet. But at the end of the sweetness, guilt takes over your head. 
pain and suffering and sickness and strife, fighting and death. The thing about guilt, it brings pain to the human heart. I, 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 if I tell you my own story, and I won't today, but I'll tell you at another time about guilt. And so to deal with the problem of guilt, I'm going in a different direction. You didn't expect me to go this morning. It's a teaching session. To deal with the problem of guilt, God says, let them make me what? That I might dwell among them. God has a desire. God has a desire to be with his children. If I take you back to the Garden of Eden. It wasn't God who separated himself from Adam and Eve. Rather it was Adam and Eve who separated themselves from God. Remember when God came calling. God says Adam, Eve. Where are you? And the response, was, the response was, we heard your voice. Um, are you with me so far? Uh, walking in the midst of the garden and we what? We hid ourselves because we were, a, we were ashamed and we were afraid. The thing with guilt, it brings shame and fear. I remember taking, my mother was an expert cook, she still is. And she would count, I don't know how she knows, but she had X amount of children and so when she cooked, she cooked enough for everybody. And everybody gets a certain portion each time she cooked. And I was a bit, um, thought I was sly like a fox. So I took out just one. Of the dumpling. And when my mother starts sharing. There was a missing dumpling. And she lined us up. All five of us. <laughs> and I don't know how she was able to scroll me out. I, the, the guilt was written all over my face. I thought I would have had an extra dumpling that evening. Instead I lost one. It is true that sometimes uh, we, we seek to satisfy our, our appetite. But the choices we make separate us. Not just from God. But the choices we make separate us one from the other. Isn't it strange that in spite of our choices, in spite of the decisions that we take, in spite of what we do, God is saying, I want to be with you. Now, I don't think you'd hear me. I'm saying in spite of the mess that you and I get ourselves in, God is saying that I still want to be with you. He says, let, me make, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. In other words, the, the function of the sanctuary is for you to experience the power, listen to me this morning, the power, the presence, and the pervasiveness of God who wants to take you from what you are to make you into something else. The, the sanctuary, a tent, was divided into different parts. We, we, we had the holy and the most holy place. Um, we had the laver. We, we had the, the spot where you went and you wash your hands. We, we, had, we had the lampstand, the table of bread and the ark of incense. And then we had the most holy place where only one person could enter. And that was the high priest. 
And when you think about the sanctuary, all of this represented, reflected on God, God presenting to us. You see, the purpose, whatever aspect of the, the sanctuary message we're talking about, it's a typology. It's a typology reflecting that not only does God want to be with us, but what God does, the sanctuary is a reflection of Christ being with us. It's the ministry of Christ. It's Christ wanting to come in and to be with us. It's the ministry of Christ. It's Christ wants to have a relationship with you. Think about this for those who are married. That, that the husband, um, he, may, he makes a mistake or, or he does something wrong. And, and he, he goes to the wife and he says, Sweetheart, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have done you wrong. Please forgive me. Uh, but that forgiveness is not just sufficient because when we have erred amongst ourselves, we affect God. Are you with me? When we commit sin and sin affects our members in church, it also affects God. And just by saying I'm sorry to the person doesn't rid you of your sin. You need to have a conversation with God. And that is why in the, in the sanctuary service, you notice for those of you who understand the sanctuary service, there is always a lamb. You would take your, your guilt, your sin, and you would place your guilt, your sin on the lamb. Now, let me explain to you something. In the olden days, uh, when uh, in the tent, it, there was about three million Jews living based on guesstimation. So when I did my wrong, Elder Courtney, and I apologized to my wife, then I had to take that lamb and take it. To the sanctuary to present my sin offering to the Lord. And so I had to walk past the people. And whilst I'm traveling to the sanctuary, Elder Pam, the question in people's mind, what wrong did Pastor Smith do this time? Because I'm going to the sanctuary. They see the lamb. They know that I have done wrong. And when I bring my, my sacrifice to the tabernacle, I bring my lamb, I, 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 I speak to the priest, I wash myself, and, and then the priest would slay the animal, and then, and then I could confess my sins that, that I messed up, that, 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 that I've messed up. And that's why when John saw Jesus coming, John could declare, Behold the Lamb of God that bears the sins of the world. Leviticus 5, 5 says, And it shall be when he shall be what? Guilty in one of these things. Read with me. That he shall what? Confess that he had sinned in that thing. So just imagine I'm traveling through. Let's say I'm living at the end of the tabernacle tristan. I'm traveling elder and I have to travel. People can see me. You see my friends. We cannot play with God. Talk to me somebody. We cannot play with God. God knows our hearts. He knows what we have done. Yes. Yes. God knows our hearts. He knows our minds. And many of us. Elder Courtney are coming to church Sabbath after Sabbath. And the guilt 
is coming to us to church. Talk to me, somebody. But we still leave the presence of God with the guilt. And we haven't said to Jesus, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. We come to the cross and we leave the cross with the guilt that we brought into the house of God. That is why some of us look miserable. Talk to me, church. That is why some of us are looking miserable. That is why some of us are unhappy because we don't understand the purpose of the church of God. It is not a social place, even though we can have social functions. It is not just a place for weddings, even though we have weddings. It is not just a place where we can sing and preach. The purpose of the church of God is when you come into the house of God with your sins, you say to Jesus, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give and when you have laid down your burdens at the altar and transfer your guilt unto Jesus, you can step out of the house of God and sing the song, praise God, I'm free. Amen. Not yet, my sister, you can respond to me at the end of the sermon. So let me explain to you the cost of not laying down your sin and your guilt. So the man woke up in the morning. True story. He rushed out of the kitchen. He's late for work. Had a glass of juice and he swallowed it down. Opened the kitchen door, run into the garage, turn on the car, press the button for the automatic door to open and he begins to back out. As he goes out, he feels the car going over something. He gets upset wondering whom in the world left something behind the car or behind the car for him to run over. He stopped the car, puts the brake on, opens the door, runs behind car to find out what it is. Maybe it's a toy. When he looks, he discovers that his little child, his little boy, had followed him. He ran over his own child without knowing. But he was so focused on getting to work that he didn't even notice that his child was behind him. Now let me ask you a question. Will that man ever again rush into the garage and back out without checking? Why? Because he has experienced the costs and until the cost of guilt, talk to me this morning somebody, until the cost of guilt hits you, you'll keep on sinning. Until we understand the cost of sin, we'll continue to commit it. Until we understand that sin divides family, sin divides nation, sin destroys church sin destroys your life as a matter of fact the bible says simply this the bible says that the wages of sin is death through jesus christ our lord it is sin is so bad it's so bad sin is so terrible that it costs the relationship between Adam and Eve. Sin is so bad that it caused Rahab to become a prostitute. Sin is so bad that David tried to cover up his life 
by killing somebody else. Am I talking to you this morning? Sin is so bad that it cost the life of the Son of God. The Bible makes it clear, for God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm saying to you this morning in this church that sin is so bad that it cost the death of the Lamb of God. So sin has consequences. Talk to me this morning. There is a cost. There is a cost. And so that the sinner, when he comes to the sanctuary, comes with his lamb, he or she confesses his sin, places his hand over the lamb. He's transferring the sin from, from himself to the lamb. Now the lamb has the burden. Sin doesn't Sin does not want the sinner to die. Sin doesn't want the sinner, sorry, God does not want the sinner to die, but the sinner wants to die. So then we take the blood of the lamb. The priest carries the blood of the animal into the most holy place symbolizing that that the priest is taking your sin go back to the sanctuary and he takes it into the most holy place um, because the bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission for our sin sin has a cost Sin has a cost. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to pay the cost? Do you know, there's something that is called a predisposition. Let me explain what a predisposition is. All of us, listen to me this morning. All of us, we have a certain weakness. Talk to me this morning. It doesn't matter who you are. You see, my weakness, follow the preacher this morning. I want to preach and I want to teach. My weakness is not Elder Nguapa's weakness. Elder Nguapa's weakness is not Elder Courtney's weakness. Neither is it Sister Pam's weakness, nor Sister Mary's weakness. So what the devil does, listen to the preacher this morning. When he comes to approach Elder Nguaba, he doesn't come with Elder Courtney's temptation. Because Elder Courtney's temptation is not Sister Nguaba's challenge. Talk to me this morning. And so when the devil comes to Elder Nguaba, he ain't looking at Elder Courtney. He's looking straight in the face of Elder Nguaba. And he knows what he needs to do to take her away from the blood of the Lamb. Are you listening to me this morning? So when I'm having my challenges, listen to the preacher this morning. When you look up on me and see me sinning or struggling, don't criticize me. Spend your time on your knees. Talk to me this morning. Because when your time comes... I think I'm talking to a sleeping church this morning. I'm saying when your time comes. Because your day is coming. <laughs> if you think Satan is just happy looking after the pastor alone. And trying to pull the pastor after his disposition. I'm saying when your time comes. And your day will come. You don't believe me? Read Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says that the devil took Jesus. 
he was led by the spirit watch me now into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil are you with me this morning the lamb of god himself had his moment of temptation oh you're not with me yet did i say the lamb of god the maker of the world himself had his moment of temptation with the tempter your temptation will not cause me to stumble so when my temptation comes along be there to help me because when your temptation comes along you're going to need somebody to lean on Let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. Listen, listen, none of us here can manage Satan. No matter how much you know the Bible from cover to cover, none of us can manage Satan. When he comes knocking at your door. But there's one who was willing to die in my stead. Oh, there was one who looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. His name is Jesus. He's king of kings and he's lord of lords he's the conquering lion of the tribe of judah he's the rose of sharon he's the lily of the valley his name is jesus so when the priest slit the goat the neck of the lamb you know the day of atonement they had to make a choice between two and one was thrown into the wilderness and the one was taken into the most holy place a symbol that you and I you and I can have access uh, to the throne of grace that's why the Bible says come boldly come boldly to the throne of grace where we can find mercy and peace and, and pardon <laughs> there he is you and I cannot stand in the presence of God we need the covering of the Holy Spirit so when we step into the presence of God we need the blood of God to cover us oh my friends you know you know the story the Bible says the Bible says uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he says in Matthew 27, 51, he says, into your hands, I commend or I commit my spirit. And then he gave up the what? The ghost and he died. Mm -hmm. He died. The Bible says the moment he died, read the text when you have time, the veil of the temple was rented so i no longer have to walk not with me this morning did i say you had to walk with your lamb and so everybody could see you going down to the tabernacle so they knew that you had sinned they didn't know what your sins were but they could see you traveling along the pathway but on that day when Jesus hang himself on the cross, it means that I no longer, when I sin, have to take my lamb and walk so people can see me, so they can shame me. No longer because the Bible says that the veil of the temple was rented and now we could see from the courtyard 
into the most holy place. God opened access. So when I sin now, I don't need to take anything anymore. Guilt doesn't have to hold me down. I can go on my knees. I can say, Lord, have mercy on me. The Bible says, the Bible says, I'm done preaching now. The Bible says that Jesus uttered these words. He says, it is finished. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. It is finished. Don't have to live in sin anymore. It is finished. I don't have to take any lamb anymore so the people can see my shame and my nakedness. Jesus says, it is finished. You don't have to walk around anymore with the guilt of the past. Praise God, I'm free. Have been set free by the grace of God. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise God. I'm free. So when I come to West Croydon Church on a Sabbath morning, having messed up, when I come to church on a Sabbath morning, having turned my life over to the wrong man, I can walk to the altar, I can lay my burdens down, and I can walk out of this church knowing that his blood has covered me. You don't have to live the way you're living anymore. You don't have to think the way you're thinking anymore. You don't have to be afraid of what people are thinking about you anymore because you are wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. So walk, walk like a champion. Stand up like a champion with your head and eye let them say what they want to say about you when they talk about you tell them that Jesus paid it all and all to him I hold sin has left a crimson stain but he washes white as snow walk with your head and eye be free. I don't know what you've done. But be free. You don't need to have mental health. Give it to Jesus. You don't need to feel ashamed anymore. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus into your hands I commend my spirit and then he gave up the ghost and die now you have access to the throne of grace you don't need me I'm just here as the pastor to encourage you come to the house of God not with a burden but with a blessing. Amen. Come to the throne of God. Not with fear, but with hope. Come to the house of God where you will find peace, yes. hope, and assurance. You don't need to live with pain anymore. We thank Pastor for a timely message. 
in a time like this and we thank the Lord for dying for us so we have the privilege and the opportunity and we thank God for his blood. At this time we'll stand and sing 520 He Hideth My Soul.
as a pastor, I see so many members and I can see that they're burdened down with guilt. Um, I see so many members and they tell me their stories, stories of past mishaps and stories. And, and, and even though they've been in the church for a long time, they, they, they are still so pressed down with those guilt. Can I declare to you this morning upon the authority of the word of God that he that the son is set free is free indeed. And I'm saying to you this morning, you don't have to worry. What you have done is done. You can't change that. But if you have laid it all at the feet of the cross, I'm telling you from my own experience, the burdens that you carry around with you, you don't need to carry it anymore. No matter what people are saying, you can't stop people from being diggers and digging into your history. That's not your, that's their prerogative. But the thing about Jesus, he takes your sins and he casts them into the depths of the sea. He remembers them no more. I want you to leave today to know the truth about Jesus. He takes your sins. He crushes them. And your brokenness, he puts you back together. So leave this morning, this afternoon, free. Amen. Father God, I want to thank you personally that you have taken Royston's sin. You have crushed them and you have cast them into the depths of the sea and you don't go back fishing for them. You keep falling in love with me over and over and over and over again and I keep running, running away, but you keep running after me. Because you, you've seen something in me that I can't even see in myself. I just want to thank you that you love me so much. I just want to thank you that you have forgiven me so much. And Lord, even though I'm not even worth it, yet still you value me so much. I just want to thank you. And I, don't, I think this is not just me, Lord. It's every single member in West Corden Church and even our members online. You love them so much. You want to lift the burden that they're carrying around this guilt that the devil keeps putting back in their head. You're saying, I am your spiritual newer surgeon. I have perform the operation I've taken the guilt and I've cast it away don't allow the devil to control your narratives Amen. father God thank you for lifting the burden off our shoulders and Lord we have come as you have said we have brought the lamb which is you you have been slain so we're leaving our burdens our guilt right in this building and we're going home and some of us might be coming back at 4 p.m. when we'll be having a deep Bible study but whilst we go we're going with, we're going with God Amen. knowing that we are free may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Peace in your workplace. Please, peace in your home. Peace for the young children in school and for the little children in nursery. May the peace of God be with every single member of this church and those online. Amen. While the deacon ushers us out, we'll sing, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy.
to 